Okay, so welcome back. So we are starting the spatial operations with uh, lecture 5. And what I mean by spatial operations is exactly this. So, so far what we were doing is, let's say pixel at coordinate x, y. We were treating it, it as a separate entity. We were not considering the neighborhood around it. And we were doing operations like histogram equalization or uh, geometric transformation, etc. But each pixel was itself considered independent of the others. Now, spatial operations, when we say it is something like we have to consider the neighborhood. Okay, so in this case, for example, the three by three neighborhood is considered. So all the eight neighbors around the coordinate x, y, they are considered for any operation that we are going to perform. So one of the classical examples of a spatial operation is filtering, right? The spatial filtering that we do. Okay, smoothing, for example, uh, edge detection, for example. So all these are spatial operations where when we consider the uh, pixel, that pixel is related to other pixel, so we will do some operations based on that relation. So this can be 3 by 3 neighborhood, it can be 5 by 5 neighborhood or even 11 by 11 neighborhood, right? So we will discuss in more details as we proceed further, okay? So uh, one such classical example is illustrated in this figure, okay? So here we have basically a uh, electron microscopy, scanning electron microscopy image of a tungsten filament is what actually shown here. Okay, and this image is something like the histogram equalized image. Basically, of this image, we do histogram equalization, we arrive at this result. Okay, so this is a global histogram equalization because we take the image, we take the histogram of the image, then we equalize it, you have the new image, right? So, this is a point operation. So, these two is related by a point operation. Okay. So, it's, it looks good definitely because you can see the texture is getting nicely picked up in all these things. But then uh, saturation also is also increased, right? I mean, you can see over maybe this region, for example, compared to this, it is heavily saturated. We already saw that, right? When we do histogram equalization, overall maybe the image contrast is improved, but some regions will be uh, pushed to zero and some to 255 and look saturated, okay? Now, instead of doing a global histogram, can we do a local histogram? So in this case, for example, we take a small window and then move that window across and each window within that window, we will do histogram equalization. For example, let's take a 3 by 3 window like this, okay? I do histogram, equalize it, put that value here. Then next window, next window and finally I stitch the entire image and that is what you are seeing over here at the third figure. So it's a local histogram and you can see actually some of the textures, you can see the saturation is uh, better here, okay? And you can see this region, for example, okay? So, let me just uh, point it out, okay? So, if you observe this region, for example, okay? So, you see definite improvement, right? The reason for that is because I am not equalizing the histogram globally. I am doing it in a smaller window and that's precisely the spatial operation means. So, now each pixel I am not treating anymore as an independent entity. It is It has some relation, definitely. Image is like that, right? Because generally an image uh, convincing to the eye will form, right? There is a some neighborhood uh, relation, some coherence, right? So that is what makes it an image. Something like edge, something like a texture. So all these are some neighbor uh, information and we are trying to leverage that. And that is precisely the spatial operation what we mean. Okay. So now let's move to a very interesting, a very, very important operation, which is known as convolution, right? Spatial convolution. And I'm sure most of you might have heard this term because of the convolutional neural network, right? And the same convolution is what we are talking about, okay? So what here exactly it means is, just like in the previous example, I take a 3 by 3 window. We call it in image processing domain as a mask or a kernel or a filter, okay? Whichever way you want to call it, you can call it. So it is something like a window and that window will always slide across the image, okay? And it does something. It may be smoothing the image, it may be finding the edges in the image, it may be doing local histogram. So whatever operation is it, let's put it in a more official mathematical way, okay? So this process of you have the kernel which slides across the image, okay? So basically what I meant is this operation. So let's consider an image, okay? So this is some image, okay? So some image is here. So what I have actually here is, let me use a different color, okay, so I have a kernel, okay, so I have a kernel which actually will uh, maybe start like this, okay, let's say 3 by 3 kernel, okay, so this is the first position, okay, so it will alter the pixel, this pixel here, okay, and then it moves in this direction and in this direction, okay, so that is 
basically the striding convention that you use in neural network, for example. Okay, so then it covers the entire image. So you may be wondering what happens to this pixel. Yes, this pixel also has to be done. Then the kernel will be out of the image. Okay, so we'll explicitly speak about what happens. Okay, what are the options we have? So it's something like oh, sorry. Uh, it has to. This guy has to be here. Okay, <laughs> sorry for my mistake. Okay. So what happens essentially is a kernel is there, and that kernel slides across the image. The sliding rate you can fix how many strides you want. You can fix. Okay, and then what it does is it actually changes the entire image based on this three by three neighborhood information in this specific case. So nobody restrict you you to have a three by three. You can go for a five by five, eleven by eleven, etc. Okay, so we don't worry about that. Now let's uh, put a very clean mathematical definition for this. Okay, so this is the expression for our uh, uh, basically our uh, uh, what do you call the convolution operation. Okay, so spatial convolution. X and Y are again the coordinates. So basically, G is the output image. Okay, so the output image at coordinate x y. So G is nothing but the intensity of the output image at the coordinate x y is given by this particular expression. So you can actually see there are Uh, different aspects to it. So let me call this. Okay. So we have W, which is considered as the filter or the mask or the kernel. Okay. Whatever name you want to call it. And you have an image which is represented by F. So F is the input image. G is the output image. W is the kernel. Okay. Let's call it as kernel throughout. Okay. And so what all things are happening? It's very interesting, right? So you are multiplying the kernel with the image. Okay. So definitely you are multiplying and see. st right st is again a pixel okay x y is also a pixel okay so this is something which is interesting and you see here s is changing from some minus a to plus a and t is changing from minus b to plus b okay so what essentially happens here is you are actually sliding the image or this can be reverse actually so convolution is actually commutative okay so you can actually reverse it you can put w here and f here so you can either slide the kernel or slide the image and typically we slide the kernel because kernel will be smaller in size okay so both ways explanation is same it's just commutative okay so what essentially what we do is we slide the image or the kernel and then each time you multiply so there is a multiplication happening so, okay so you can see a dot product the multiplication happening between the pixel intensities so w is an intensity f is an intensity w is an intensity at s and t f is an intensity at x plus s and y plus t so you multiply that okay and then continuously sum each of those multiplication so you slide the kernel you multiply and you add that to a common factor common value and then you again after sliding again multiply add to the previous okay so the end of sliding you multiply and then add it up so it is something like multiply and accumulate function and you get the final image like that so x is varied y is varied because of s and t variation okay so i will have a beautiful explanation and illustration in the next slide so it makes uh, it very clear to you in case you are not aware of this if you are coming from a dsp or a signals and systems background you are very very well aware of the convolution operation so there you treat it as a 1d here you have to treat it as a 2d that is why you have both directions right the row direction and the column direction okay and in this case in this specific example i mean case let's put it in a very uh, systematic way so this kernel can be of size m by n so for example 3 by 3 okay and then a value is given by m minus 1 by 2 and b value is given by n minus 1 by 2 so take an example okay so let's take uh, an example of uh, 3 by 3 okay so let's take a 3 by 3 kernel So that means m equal to three, n equal to three, and in that case a is equal to three minus one by two is one, right? And b is equal to again three minus one by two is equal to one, okay? And so in that case the expression will become s is equal to minus one to one, and t is equal to again minus one to one, right? And let me put the other way so that it's easier to explain, okay? So the f of uh, s comma t. Okay, and uh, we have W of x plus s, okay, y plus t. Okay, so in this case, actually, both s and t are same, right? It doesn't matter. Okay, so now what essentially happens is you are going to uh, see the kernel at different. So this is G of x comma y. Okay, so basically, you are sliding the kernel each time you dot product it, and you keep on accumulating it till the Final result comes. Okay, so that is the expression. So let me actually explain it using a figure. Okay, so this is the case. So you have an input image, 
okay so you have an input image here okay and you have a kernel let's assume the kernel is in this position okay and here you are going to alter this particular value okay again the pen will be useful here so you are going to alter this particular value here okay so that particular value is in the image is nothing but f of xy so this f of xy will change to g of xy okay so how do you going to alter it so this is exactly the expression i was telling minus 1 to 1 we just now saw the equation right so minus 1 to 1 to minus 1 to 1 sorry minus 1 to minus sorry minus 1 minus 1 to plus 1 plus 1 so that is the variation both in row and both in column so that is what you are actually doing okay so what essentially happens is you have this placed on top you have the dot product and then you sum it up okay that value will be put in this g of x y always remember that so let me go to the illustration it makes very clear here okay so here I'm going to consider an image which is shown in black color 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9 those are the intensity values of a 3 by 3 image okay this is for illustration okay and I have a kernel which is shown in red color and this is a very peculiar kernel you will see that so this is actually an edge operator okay in the in the vertical direction okay so this is an edge operator in the vertical direction okay or in the uh, y direction I would say okay sorry horizontal yeah, it's a horizontal direction, right? Not vertical direction. It's in the y direction, this is down. Okay. So uh, what essentially this does is uh, you are going to do a convolution between these two kernels. Okay. Typically our image will be of a big size like 256 by 256, and the kernel will be of a small size like 3 by 3. But here for an illustration example, or uh, uh, easy illustration, I'm just using both of them as 3 by 3. Okay. Now I want to uh, give a bigger picture here. Okay. So this generally uh, is not explained that very thoroughly so let's consider an image which is bigger okay so let's here this is a full picture of the image okay and for illustration purpose i'm just going to use few pixels okay so i will draw for you that okay so i'm just going to only draw this okay so you have so many things okay so let's consider only these three okay and now this location is first i want to update Okay, so how do you go about it? Okay, so for that purpose, you have to put the kernel in such a way that the sender should match, right? So that's what you are going to do. Okay, let me use a different color. Okay, so the kernel will be something like this at the start. Okay, so you're going to exactly match. Okay, perfect. Okay, so sender of the kernel is now at the first pixel okay this pixel is going to get altered now here a problem is there right because this pixel this pixel this pixel and this pixel are outside the image region okay so what shall i do okay so there are many ways to go about it and this is known as pairing okay you might have heard this term in the convolutional neural network right pairing so pairing means your input image has to be padded so that you have some values at the outside region when you do this particular step okay so when you want to update the first first uh, pixel your kernel will go out of the bound out of bound of the image so you have to zero pad for example okay so one option is to actually have zeros okay outside of image you pair it with zeros okay so that is zero pairing okay so that means outside is zero you can do another thing but problem is if you say let's say it is all zeros here so what happens let's say this is zero this is zero this is zero throughout okay i'm so talking about the image if it is 0, the problem is there is a jump from 0 to some pixel value, some intensity value. There is 0 to some jump, right? I mean, some intensity value jump. So that will create some artifact at the boundary in the final image because you have some jump. That's not good for you. Okay, so another option is actually you can do something like uh, you can uh, extend the image. So that means your image will be just replicated throughout. So in this direction, this direction, this direction, this direction, even in the diagonal directions, you keep the image, it's something like this. So this is your original image. You just make image repeat okay, throughout. So that means image is repeated throughout, even in the diagonal direction. Okay. So everywhere you have on the if you consider image itself as one image, all the directions, all the orientations, you pair it with the same image. But then there is a problem here because this is the top of the image, and for this image, this is the bottom, right? Right, and the problem is very rarely you will have a continuity between bottom and top because again there will be a sudden jump. So what then you do is 
uh, a more advanced operation which is flipping okay so that means normal this will be the same image this guy will be a flipped version of this guy and similarly this guy will be a flipped version of this guy in that case this top and top will match because it is a flipped version right so this will be the top and again this will be the top or sorry this will be the bottom right so that means this is bottom of the image and then this will be followed by bottom of the image so in that case there will be a good continuity between so that way you reduce the uh, discontinuity issue so just to reiterate what i am telling if you are doing convolution operation most probably what you will end up is at some stage you will end up going the kernel is going because for the first pixel your kernel will go out of bound of the image so different options are there for you and that option is known as padding right and uh, we can do zero padding which means extend the image with zeros you can do same which means you are extending the image uh, basically in the sense like repeating replicating the image or you flip okay so this is the same option you have in convolutional neural networks also okay if you go for a convolutional kernel you have these options okay that is one option okay let me just uh, clear it off okay and now assuming that here i am doing zero padding okay so you, you are going to estimate this pixel okay this pixel in the final image the density of that pixel in the output image so what you all do is you put the kernel like this okay so that the center of the kernel the mask is exactly at the first pixel in the image and now you do a dot product that means 1 into 0 right because there is no image intensity it is 0 padded so 1 into 0 that is what this is okay let's call the other way image intensity is put as first so 0 into 1 plus 0 into 2 plus 0 into 1 then again 0 into 0 plus 1 into 0 right 1 into 0 because 1 is the intensity 0 is the kernel value and then 2 into 0 okay then here minus sorry 0 into minus 1 that's what it is And four into minus two, and five into minus one. And now you add it all. So you have the dot product. You multiply. Now you sum it up, okay? And put that value in this pixel. That's what you are going to happen. So here everything goes off. It will be only minus eight plus minus five, which is minus thirteen. Okay? So minus thirteen should go and sit over that space in the output image. Okay? Now you go ahead. So I now the ah this is interesting. Now I push the kernel to the right. Okay? In this case, I just had a stride of one. Okay, so you might be well familiar with this terminology, stride, right? Strides. This is again used in neural network. You see how beautiful it is. It's coming from image processing. It's not really a neural network concept. Okay. So you stride by one in this case, and you can actually decide if you want to how stride by two. That means the next one will be going to here, right? And uh, this will be this pixel will be the center pixel. Okay. So let me ignore it. Okay, so I just had a stride of one, and again you repeat the process. You have a dot product, so this means zero into one because image is again zero padded. So zero into one plus zero into two plus zero into one. That's what you have here. Okay, and then this one is this line. Okay, so one into zero. Okay, two into zero, three into zero. That is this line will belong to this guy. Okay, over here. So we just discard it so that you can see it. And then similarly, four into minus one, five into minus two, six into minus one. So in this case, only this remains, and then the answer is basically twenty. Okay. And similarly, another step. Okay. So you have minus seventeen, and so okay. So this guy will be going and sitting over here, and this guy will be going and sitting over here. Okay. And this guy, let me for completeness, let's put that. Okay. So they will be sitting over in this space. Okay. So maybe I'll quickly jump through and have the last one. or maybe the middle one where the kernel exactly overlaps with the image and in this case it is just like you dot product 1 into 1 plus 2 into 2 plus 3 into 1 plus all zeros plus 7 into minus 1 plus 8 into minus 2 plus 9 into minus 1 that is 24 and this guy goes and sits exactly at this guy okay this this pixel okay so let's actually finish it off okay so this is the result okay so this is the original image this is the kernel size or space i am using 3 by 3 kernel and if i do a convolution operation which means this guy has to go and sit on top of each of these pixels and then you get the output so you remember this guy okay minus 13 is coming and sitting here minus 20 is coming and sitting here minus 17 is coming and sitting here minus 24 is coming and sitting here okay so that's it so you understood convolution if you understood this slide okay so this is exactly if i go back this is exactly nicely summarized in this expression okay Don't remember the expression or not understanding it. Forget it. You can do it like this, okay? And it's a simple two-three lines of code.
Okay, so that is all about spatial convolution. I hope you are understood and very interested in this. Okay, so now let's stop here. This this particular lecture, let's stop here. Now we'll take up some applications. Okay, so I already showed one application in the spatial uh, operation. Uh, one is like localized histogram, right? Local histograms. But the most popular or the most widely used spatial operation, I would say, is filtering. Okay. So let's spend some time in uh, in uh, in this beautiful world of filtering, where we smooth the image, we find edges in the image, we do something else. We will do partial smoothing and partial edge enhancement, which is nothing but the uh, what you call band pass filtering effect. So all these things we will discuss in the next lecture. Okay. So till then, bye and see you in the next lecture.